Imagine a world where angels, not just as divine messengers but as revered daughters of God, were central to religious belief. This is the forgotten mythology of pre-Islamic Arabia, a time when goddesses like Alat, Al-Uzza, and Manat held divine status. Join us as we uncover the angelic daughters snubbed from doctrine. Before the rise of Islam, the Arabian Peninsula was home to diverse beliefs and deities. Among these were three powerful goddesses, Alat, Al-Uzza, and Manat, who were considered the daughters of God. In this video, we'll delve into the origins of these beliefs, the roles these goddesses played and how their worship was ultimately erased from religious doctrine. But first, let's understand the concept of angels across different cultures and religions. Angels are often depicted as winged beings of virtue, created by God to serve various heavenly purposes. In Islam, they are revered but not seen as God's children. So, how did this belief in angelic daughters arise in pre-Islamic Arabia? Let's find out. Al-Lat, a goddess who could bring both prosperity and wrath, was once a central figure in Arabian worship. But what led to her fall from grace? In the northern Arabian peninsula and the city of Mecca, Al-Lat was a prominent deity. Worshippers believed she could dispense peace, mercy, and prosperity. Her amulets and statues, often found on travelers and in homes, symbolized her protective nature. However, if scorned, Al-Lat could be vengeful, inflicting ailments on those who defaced her sacred symbols. Al-Lat's shrine in Taif, adorned with gold and a granite statue, was a place where no blood could be spilled, and violence was forbidden. This peace was shattered when Prophet Muhammad's forces destroyed her temple, marking the end of her worship. What was the significance of Al-Lat's fall, and how did it reshape the spiritual landscape of Arabia? Al-Uzza, the fierce goddess of the morning star, faced a dramatic end at the hands of Muhammad's forces. But who was this powerful deity, and why was she so revered? Al-Uzza, often worshipped as a white cubic stone near Mecca, was a goddess associated with love and war. Some believed she represented the morning and evening stars, while others linked her to the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Her temple in Nakla and the three sacred acacia trees symbolized her divine presence. Muhammad's military commander, Ibn al-Walid, was tasked with eradicating her worship. In a dramatic encounter, Ibn al-Walid reportedly confronted and killed a dark-skinned woman with wild hair, believed to be Al-Uzza herself. This act symbolized the end of her divine influence. How did the destruction of Al-Uzza's temple impact the religious beliefs of the time? Manat, the oldest and wisest of the goddesses, held the power over fate and time. Discover how her legacy was erased from Arabian worship. Manat, revered as a goddess of fate, fortune, and time, was worshipped by tribes in Medina. Pilgrims would shave their heads and present themselves before her idol seeking blessings and good fortune. Manat was also seen as a guardian of graves, ensuring the dead rested peacefully. However, like her sisters, Manat's worship was brought to an end by Muhammad's forces. Military leader Sa'd ibn Zayd al-Ashali was sent to destroy her idol, marking the final blow to the pre-Islamic goddesses. Why were these goddesses so significant, and what does their erasure tell us about the transformation of religious beliefs in Arabia? The Quran fiercely rejects the idea of God's daughters, but what drove this denouncement and what remains of the angelic daughter's legacy? The Quran explicitly denounces the belief in God having daughters, particularly in Surah An-Najm. This strong rejection was a response to the prevalent worship of Allat, Al-Uzza, and Manat. Muhammad's mission to establish monotheism required the eradication of these pre-Islamic beliefs. Interestingly, some accounts suggest that Muhammad momentarily praised these goddesses, a controversial incident known as the Satanic Verses. While widely rejected by scholars, this tale highlights the tension between old and new beliefs. As we conclude our series, we reflect on the legacy of these angelic daughters. Though their worship was erased, their stories offer a glimpse into a time of rich spiritual diversity and the profound transformation that reshaped Arabian society.